Um, Are the power rankings really just who would put it up to Limerick the best, says Kieran Fenley and Shane Power. When we see the power rankings in title, we all know Tip will be first and Callan and Hurler here. <laughs> Thank you, Shane Power, for that. Appreciate that. Will we, uh, will we go straight into the power rankings? So Limerick are at number one. That's, that's not up for the debate. I don't think anyone would question that. Now, if Liam Cahill had to get the Tipperary job, I think we'd, we'd, would we be putting Tipperary number two here? Oh, I think you'd be putting him, but you'd only be putting him two on potentially. I think you'd have to see it before he could. But uh, and, and plus, what, the, the team full of a load of All Ireland winners. Which all? Which under twenty and under twenty one All Ireland winners? They won All Ireland in twenty nineteen. So most of the panel has an All Ireland. <laughs> I think, yeah, potentially. If Liam Cattle was there, if if Liam Cattle was there, I wonder how many of the twenty nineteen All Ireland winners would still be involved potentially. As well, you said. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and look uh, because but, I'm not gonna have you casting aspersions over Tipperary Harland. But, like but just a quick one um, on what one of the viewers said, and I think it's a very uh, fair question: Is number two? The, the team that will put it up that we think will put it up best to Limerick, uh, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, can you put a team number two uh, if you don't think that if you think that they'll beat everybody else, but you don't think they'll be able to put it up to Limerick? Do you know what I mean? It's an yeah, awkward that's kind a, of a question, you know. That's a fair point in terms of you couldn't make it Waterford or Cork, but Tipperary got closer than anyone losing by five <laughs> points. So I agree with you. Right, I'm going to go through that Tipperary team of 2019. Brian Hogan will still be on the panel. Cahill Burke or Cahill Barrett will. Barry Heffernan will, Ronan Maher will, Brendan will be gone, Porrick Maher will see, Seamus Kendi will be there, Noam McGrath, I'd imagine he'd be there, that's six, Breen, seven, McCormick, eight, Bubbles, nine, Niall O'Mara, ten, Jason Ford, eleven, Callan may or may not, John McGrath will be twelve, Mark Kyo, Willie Connors, Jake Morris, uh, Ger, Bra Ger Brown might be back in again, and then all those underage winners as well, so I'm not really sure what you're talking about. I do think there would have been a lot, there'd be a lot, I think potentially there would have been a lot more movement uh, in the squad and potentially people off the squad are retiring if Cahill had been manager. That's, my, that's just my own opinion. I think he would have shaken things up an awful lot. But the, but the oldest of the guys that I named there is Noel McGrath, who's still 30. And then the other lads are like, some of them are 27 and 28. So I, I included that, yes, Paddy Maher is 30, going to be 32. Seamus Callan will be probably 33. So maybe they're iffies. But like I've named 18 or 19, 17 or 18 lads otherwise that would still be there. So they got closest to Limerick last year and you've still got most of them going to be around that have won all Ireland. So, you know, what what what's your point? My point is uh, that none of us would have seen the droppings of Noel Connors and Maura Shannon when Cahill came into Watford. So I would have expected something similar in tip, uh, if not more severe. So surely power rankings are based on stats, not what ifs, says Chris Quinn. An interesting question for you lads. If Cahill had left Watford, would we then be lower down in the pecking order? Uh <sighs> Possibly so because I, I think so, yeah. Because yeah. you you know you're pay, placing a lot of stock into potential, and Waterford have an awful lot of potential with Cat at the helm for next year. Uh, there would have been there would have been a lot of change, and you wouldn't like we know what we're going to get from Waterford aside from the Clare game this year. You know what you're going to get from them nearly every day. If a new manager come in, you wouldn't know. So I, I that's I think that's a fair point, yeah. Okay, let's make a start on these rankings and see what way we're going to go with it. So I'm going to put Limerick in as number one. No question about that, uh, which is a pretty obvious thing to say. Uh, Where Limerick do you start here at number two? <clears throat> I mean, okay, let, let's do process of elimination. Um, so can it be Cork? Uh, beaten by eight points by Limerick in the first in the Munster semi-final, beaten by 16 in the All-Ireland final. Uh, beat, beat Clare, beat Kilkenny. Yeah, who did beat in the quarter-final, actually? Um, they beat oh, was it Cork? Wait, no, was it Clare in the quarter final? Dublin beat, the, yeah, like that's that wouldn't blow you away. Uh, apart, apart from Kilkenny, Kilkenny would have been in, would have been the only team they beat that would be in the top three or four, shall we say? Arguably, yeah, okay, arguably, um, yeah. wouldn't blow me away. I like, I, I definitely look at. Probably Waterford having better form. Uh, probably, probably, probably would look at Waterford having better form and Waterford having a better chance. And like it's, it's always saying they match up well with Limerick and have are look at it as one of the best, you know, best teams equipped to beat them. They were beaten by what eleven in the All Ireland final last year, four in the Munster final last year, and eleven again this year, wasn't it? 
Yeah, so over three games, that's what twenty six points combined to defeat. Yeah, like eight what eight point six six recurrent. That's what they've been beaten by on average. Um, so and did they look like yeah. winning any of them? Not really. No, not really. They had their well, spells against got, Limerick. Got hammered in two. Yeah, they had their spells in it. Uh, Waterford's a funny one. Waterford is potential wise, and you're thinking that potentially Cahill can bring them another step, and you're thinking next year maybe that De Borca will be back, maybe that Stephen O'Keefe will be back as well. So it's more on more on potential. Um, I, I don't know. I definitely don't think it's definitely far from a foregone conclusion of giving them number two anyway. So we'd have to we'd have to go through the merits of a couple of others. Yeah, I mean, Sean O'Brien did well in the goals this year for Watford, I think. You know, I think he did pretty well. Like, I wouldn't be hanging any major mistakes on him. I know Sean, uh, Sean or Stephen O'Keefe is really good as a sweeper-keeper. And, you, you know, he, maybe he can evolve to actually start carrying the ball out a little bit further again. Uh, yeah, a couple more comments in here. Owen Douglas, lads, I would give Watford second or at least third. Nice pacey side. A lot of the panel won a minor All-Ireland in, in 2018. That will uh, win an All-Ireland uh, within three or four years. Was it the uh, minor uh, All-Ireland in Turkey? Thirteen yeah. and twenty-one All Ireland in sixteen, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, Shane Power had come in and just clarified that. James Daly, I'm a Limerick man, and we have to go to Ennis and Parky Cueve next year. So hard to predict who the number two team might be, as every game next year will be savage. Watford for me a real threat if all that fits. Just a question on Watford says Shane Power with Tiger Burke, Park Mahoney, and possibly Saki, which is Stephen O'Keefe coming back next year. Do you think we can finally go the extra step and end the famine? It's a lot of it depends on Limerick, to be honest with you. If, if actually, if they can, well, I mean, this comes back to the power rankings. Then, are Watford number two? Do you feel confident that Watford would beat every side beneath them on route to an All Ireland next year, more so than the others? Um, well, Tip are one of the sides that you would probably argue are second or third. They beat they beat Tip in this year's championship. Uh, they beat Kilkenny in last year's championship. Um, so, so like. I think when push comes to shove, like uh, taking uh, Tipperary's first half performance against Waterford out of it. Um, against Wat Limerick or Waterford? It's against Limerick, sorry. Um, when Waterford have all their personnel, best personnel available to them, I do think they're the, the best equipped side to beat Limerick. But isn't it mad that we're saying that about a team who's been beaten on an average of nine points when they've played that side? That's how good, that's just how good Limerick are. Yeah, no, it's true. To be honest, if Tipperary had their their management sorted at this point and we could look ahead and think, well, because of this type of manager, you can expect this from Tipperary last year or history tells us that this, that and the other. And we don't know who's retiring and not either. I don't think we can have Tipperary at number two here. I, I think it's going to have to be Watford. Yeah, look, I <laughs> look, if Tip played Watford next year and the right man's in charge, I think Tipperary win the game. But I know I know not everyone is gonna is gonna agree with me on that one. But, but there's the always like Shane, yeah, there's always going to be uh, there's always going to be a sense of loyalty as well. It's like if you ask me, can awfully beat whoever, um, as long as I'm not like jumping like completely to the other side. You are in a, there's an innate part of you that's going to think that, that, and there has to be. Yeah, it's true. And look, Watford do have the scores, and and they do have the runners, and they they have they have everything that's required for modern hurling, and there's more probably next year in Jamie Barron, like he showed flashes of it, but he didn't get a full run into the season. I think there's more in Ozzy Gleeson. Uh, will Ty de Borca come back the player he was? I mean, he's he's absolutely sublime when he's fit. And then will Irla Daly, who was injured this year, kick on another level? What do you expect even from Park Mahoney? It's going to be tough with, the, with his sort of injury history. And is he the type of player that Liam Cahill will want for the running game? Just a, a quick one on, on De Borca. Um, we all can take it for granted that he's going to be back next year and at those levels. And it's just it has to be commented on the hours and the work that has to be done behind the scenes for him to come back. Like he came back in outrageous shape last year. He was he was better than ever last year before that cruciate. And I just think it does have to be said. Like there's a lot of quiet hours, lonely hours by yourself that you're putting in to make sure that you get back to that level again. But obviously, uh, past history would tell us that he that he probably will. Adam Dennehy asks, are you going to predict that Peter Duggan will play for Clare next year? How far off the, off the, if he comes back? Um, not much. So he has been back and been doing okay already for the club. Yeah, yeah, he, he put up a big score for Clooney Quinn uh, the first weekend. I think there was around the Clare matches during the week because I think Six Mile Bridge beat... Uh, 
Wolf Tones last night and beat them fairly convincingly. I think there's six goals in their two games so far. But uh, Peter Duggan is like uh, Peter Duggan is still only like he was young in 2013 when he was on the panel. He's like he's still you know mid to late twenties, only around twenty seven. I think twenty seven ish. I think so. There's still plenty of time for him, and I like he's the sort of lad. It's not as if he's been doing nothing or anything either. Uh, plus, the uh, last the, the last eighteen months has been different. There's probably hasn't been as much maybe inter county training uh, collectively as previous years. So I'm sure he was doing. I think it was out in Perth. He was I'm sure he was out doing. He was doing plenty of bits and pieces. He's the sort of lad. Uh, he's the sort of lad that would definitely keep his shoulder to the wheel and be doing things. And if he's coming back in and fitting in with club games and performing well, that would suggest, and that would give him a nice run into the going back in with Clare too. He's not, he wouldn't be coming in cold in November or like that. He'd have a decent body of work done. So I don't see any reason why if he wants if he wants to be there, like he'd be he'd be a huge addition, and he would it would take a bit of time during the league to bed back in. But uh, like he was at his best in twenty eighteen, he was sensational. Ah, he was unreal and Adrian McGrath says he scored 12 or 13 points in the first round of the championship. Shane O'Donnell has also reappeared for Air Oak, which is a huge thing. And does that feed into the conversation that we want to have about Clare and the pecking order here? If they did what they did this year without an all-star in Peter Duggan from a couple of years ago, yeah, fair enough, we don't know if he'll hit the same heights again this year. And Shane O'Donnell, who we know is a class act, especially if he gets a nice bit of ball. Like, add those two guys into the squad there, and all of a sudden it's looking fairly rosy with Brian Lohan. Big time. Um, I tell you what, what do we say about a lot of counties? We're not sure exactly what we're going to get on a given day. It looks like generally under Lohan, you know what you're going to get every day, and that's a, a full blooded commitment. Um, like outside of you know Patrick Collins' save from Tony Kelly, Claire would have been the ones going through the back door, and who knows how they would have got on there. But there's definitely um, there's definitely a lot of potential. Like Rory Hayes looks like he's only get, getting better. Carl Malone looks like he's only going to get better. Um, Dear Ryan is after bedding in at wing back. John Conlon surprised everyone at centre back. Ryan Ryan Taylor uh, has, is only getting better in attack. So their graph is definitely on the up. You'd have to say that. You would have to say that. The only reason Claire were so were further down the power rankings than maybe some people would have thought is because we thought Cork would beat Claire. And they, they did, and Clare were a bit were a bit further back. But at the end of the year now, and with Lone having uh, another three years ahead, and potentially two big forwards, two marquee forwards coming back, they're definitely in the equation. We probably need to. So we've agreed Limerick one, and we've agreed Waterford two. Yeah. The and conversation around like three, four, five. They're looking at. They're looking at. Cork, Tip, Tip Waterford, Kilkenny, Galway, Dublin. You know, I mean, because Dublin did beat Galway, so that that kind of brings them into that conversation. Where do you honestly think Tip come into this conversation now? Honestly, now take the take the you know blue and gold hat off for a second, and you're actually wearing kind of blue and a bit of, a bit of gold trim. A bit of trim, yeah, a bit of trim. <laughs> like, where uh, do you think they honestly come into the conversation, especially as we have this conversation on? the morning of Thursday, the 2nd of September, where Liam Cal is not coming to tip and we don't know who's managing tip and we don't know the personnel that are going to be involved next year. Well, you see, this is the thing. Liam Cal was the only person who's got the, well, he was he had the best CV coming into this conversation. So then who else has inter-county top-level experience? And you'd say Darren Gleeson has it with Antrim last year or two. And that was going okay, or certainly the like obviously did very well with the Joe McDonough. The league campaign this year suggested that things are flying on, and then obviously they ultimately, you know, they sort of had a very poor performance against Dublin in the Leinster Championship, got hammered, and then they got relegated with a bit of a non performance against Leash for a lot of the game. Now they made a right burst during the middle of the second half, but it wasn't a good performance. Um, and you'd say, other, other than that, is there enough experience there? Because you'd like to see someone maybe over a few club teams and do well, or maybe over the under 20s and minors and do well. So, you know, there, there, there just probably aren't that many people who you'd say, well, that's a very obvious manager to step in. We, we know we're going to get there. You know, if you're if you're Kilkenny and Brian Cody steps down tomorrow, how many different options do you have where you can sort of, comf you know, confidently say he'd do a good job? We've seen proof there. Henry Shefflin's won two All-Irelands. Eddie Brennan's got a lot of experience. He's done quite well. Oh, look, there's David Herity. He's done well with yeah, there. DJ, Mike, Michael, Michael Finley. Yeah, you yeah. know, name, you know, you can keep naming them. And, but like with other counties, that's probably just not the case. And you know what? 
it comes back to two those those Kilkenny clubs have done quite well in championships. Um, you know, obviously Valley Hill being as strong as they are, that has definitely given a good platform for us to see what Henry Shefflin is about. But uh, with, within the Tipperary Club Championship, there aren't all that many guys who are putting their hands up and saying, give it to me. Like, Brendan Cummins could be brilliant. But the thing is, we just don't know. We just don't know because he's had involvement with Leash and Kerry. And, like, because the Liam Cahill thing went the way it was, I do believe that Tipperary need to get a manager who's not just good, but a name so that everyone can kind of get behind it. And then, obviously, the onus is on that person to get a really good coaching team uh, and delegate properly and all that kind of stuff. You're saying, basically, there needs to be a spring in everybody's step when the management manager is announced. Yeah, but not a world-class management team a la Bobby Robson and Steve Staunton. It's got to be for <laughs> the right reasons. So this is why yeah. I, I've kind of gone a long-winded way to just say that there aren't too many obvious answers to this one for Tipperary at this point. Um, so me, I see a comment there from L689, me all done it to tip a runner. And uh, like instantly, I think Tipperary aren't going to get an outside manager. Now, I, as a Tipperary person, I am open to the idea of an outside manager, but I don't know if it hap would happen because of what other people would think and because of the county board. But I think Michal Donahue, because he was involved previously um, during the Eamon O'Shea era, I, I wouldn't entirely rule that out. Um, I wouldn't, but I do think that it probably won't happen. And all of this comes back to, it does leave Tipperary at a little bit of a shaky moment. Players will retire. Can we bring through the rest of the guys who were so good underage? Like, they need to be brought through. So the right, if they're, if you don't have the right man there, they actually won't come through the way they should. As um, as good as Michal who is, and he obviously, um, he got, got Galway to the promised land after, what was it, 29 years. Uh, would that be a bit of an indictment of you know, coaching management in, you know, personnel or quality in Tipperary if they had to go outside at this stage, they've never gone outside. I, th I wonder how does it reflect on the club championship? You know, in terms of like, right, so I said to you for a long time, I think Tipperary too often are tactically behind. The hurlers are always there, but tactically a little bit behind. And maybe that's something that's borne out from the club championship because, you know, I talk with different lads who've, growing up in the Kilkenny County Championship and they're I mean and I'd love to hear other people's opinion of this but like they talk as if tactics have been going since they were under 16 minor that sort of thing and I'm just not sure that that's there to the same level in tip I do think it's it's catching up a little bit by the way I definitely do think but it's maybe that generation of players that came through I don't know the 2010 era and ever since when they're retired and have had a few years of coaching that we might see it in the same way that Kilkenny are starting to see that right now. Because, you know, if, if Cody had to leave in any of the last 15 years, would you have had that many obvious lads to step in? Yeah, there's probably a couple of candidates. There probably is. But nowhere near what there is right now. And maybe Tipperary, because they've had sort of the, go the generation that won a couple of All-Irelands, maybe when they come through in the next couple of years, maybe that's going to be the case. But maybe not either. Can I just say something as well? Because uh, it sprung to mind when you mentioned about Brian Cody there. Has Brian Cody staying on with Kilkenny uh, like helped an awful lot of people, an awful lot of guys, an awful lot? Henry's been able to go and serve an apprenticeship elsewhere. Eddie's been able to go and serve an apprenticeship. Michael Fenley, David Herity, uh, DJ. Uh, all guys that if, if, you know, if uh, Cody had left in the last 10 years, they probably would have been parachuted into a job a lot quicker than they would have wanted. Definitely a fair point. But then is that the case in other counties? You know, it didn't help out Meath, for example. Sean Boylan was there for 24 years and, you know, Meath has, uh, were circling the drain for years. So, yeah, but uh, Mickey Hart was with Tyrone for so long and then Brian Dewar and Fergal Logan come in and have them in all Ireland in their first year. And they were like, I, I was up at Peter the Peter Canavan's an option. Yeah, yeah. like I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Peter Canavan was able to go and serve an apprenticeship with Fermanagh. You know, um, Ryan McMenamin was able to go and serve an apprenticeship with Fermanagh that maybe otherwise wouldn't have happened as a coach, as a selector, and as manager. Um, I just think I just think it's an interesting one. It has definitely given them more time. Like, how often has it happened where guys have ended up in a job much sooner than they wanted to be? As I was saying, I was up at the Tyrone Presser the other night, and someone asked uh, Brian Dewar, "Did you think ten months ago that you'd be Tyrone that?" The Tyrone would be here and he was like to be honest with you I didn't think 10 months, 10 months ago I'd be involved in management uh, but 
you know, he's gone long enough now. He's done, been able to go off and do the twenty ones, and now he's it's time for them to be involved. The scene. I just think it's an it's an interesting one. As much as people, some people give out about how long Cody has stayed. Uh, the there's definitely loads of successors now waiting to come in, which you couldn't have said probably maybe five or six years ago. Yeah, because like outside of like, who are the the club managers that are really standing out? You know, and I mean across the board the last number of years. You could say Matty Kenny, he's obviously in a county job now. Uh, Shane O'Neill, he's in a county job now. Even go back a few years before that, Stephen Rochford, he won an All-Ireland with uh, Cara Finn. He ends up managing um, managing Mayo. So this is a really good stepping stone. Within Tipperary, Tipperary have not won a club All-Ireland since 1987, Bursley, Lee, of course, famously. And, you know, nobody else has won it. And now the guy who took... Um, took Bursley. Now, a lot of people are involved in, in making that happen. But like Johnny Kelly was the manager, a Galway guy. And I couldn't see that happen. I couldn't see Johnny Kelly being installed as Tipperary Hurling manager. And to be honest, like he hasn't, he's obviously been passed off for the for the job of Galway too at this point. He's involved with Michael Fenley there and awfully. But like there's no one else putting their hand up in the last couple of years in terms of getting beyond that and winning the club all Ireland. Like Thurless got to an all Ireland semi final, but really Thurless should have should have gone further and harder as far as I'm concerned. So I think that is the problem too. Like are there club managers around the country now whose like hands are shoved mad up in the air thinking this guy needs to be installed as manager outside of Henry Shefflin? No, prob- probably not, to be honest with you, know, probably not, in fairness. Um, I, I, it's, it's definitely interesting. We're, uh, we're after doing some amount of segueing away from, the, from this power rankings, I can tell you yeah. that. But, but I do think this is, a very, this is very, it's a very valid conversation to have with regards to Tipperary. So for me, there's too much uh, doubt over Tipperary at the moment. If, uh, you know, you're going to say if they played Kilkenny in the, mor- in the morning, would they, would they beat them? Um, well, they wouldn't have a manager to select the 15 at the moment or pick a, pick a squad. So I'm not, I'm not sure if they play them next year in a championship game. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to know. It, a lot does depend on, on, who, on who comes in. So like, you know, three, four, five, we're, talk, we're talking Tip Kilkenny, Cork. How, like, how far down do Cork fall based on that All-Ireland final? Yeah, okay. Sorry, just one other segue back. On about club teams with modern tactics, you're probably looking at Ballyhale, Ballygunner, etc. These top club teams are nearly using better, more modern tactics than some intercounty teams. I fully agree. I fully Ballygunner, agree. Ballygunner have made themselves. Ballygunner would fit in to, uh, you know, to definitely fit into uh, to Division 2A and, you know, playing the 12th, 11th and 10th best teams in the country. They're so hard to beat. They've made themselves so hard to beat in Watford and, and beyond. And yet haven't won a club all Ireland, which is you know, you yeah. that that step is probably gonna to have to happen pretty soon for them if it's gonna happen uh with this generation. So right, we're start, we're saying Limerick won Watford too, yeah? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. Yeah. So then we're looking between Cork Tip, Kilkenny, Dublin, Galway. I don't think we're putting Clare up there in that particular bracket just yet. No, like <sighs> How much will the All Ireland final affect Cork in the short term? While in the the medium term, it might be a great thing for them. I can't have Cork at three anyway. I'll tell yeah. you that I can't have Cork at three just because uh, there's questions over you know some personnel now. Obviously, outside of Patrick Horgan, whether other guys will be back as well. Um, the under twenty success and the minor success is great. Um, and back to back under twenties is savage, but that like that just does not happen quickly. It just does not. It's going to take a bit of time. Um, so I like, I think Cork are minimum minimum four for me. Yeah. Do you think anyone who else could have done that first half against uh, Limerick? This is why I'm pushing for Tip to be number three. Um, based on all evidence I've seen, I I I, I don't know. I, I don't know if there is another team. The only other one that has come close is probably the first 20 minutes that Kilkenny produced against them in the 2019 All-Ireland semi-final. That's the only thing that even mm. comes close, I would think. And, and even the question about that is, how different is Limerick 19 versus Limerick 21? Yeah, it falls apart. Like, yeah, I, okay. I think I think that's that game is like... Uh, when Donegal beat Dublin in 14, like I think Limerick have systematically changed since then. They've made themselves even more difficult to beat. And said, like Aaron Galan was on, 
had probably one of his best years in 2019, but they were over reliant on him and they realized they were over reliant on him and they no longer are. There's loads of different people that can chip in and the ball ends up in a different person's hands nearly in every attack. Uh, so they have changed a lot since then. So I, I, I couldn't envisage that happening again. Now, saying that, if, if Kilkenny had played in the All Ireland final, there's no way Kilkenny would have been as naive as Cork. There would have been 12 bodies behind the ball. There would have been, and they would have soaked it up and started building and got themselves into the game. So I think it's a it's a tight run thing between between Kilkenny and Tip. Um, Are you suggesting that Kilkenny wouldn't get hammered in an All Ireland final like they did in two thousand sixteen and nineteen? I uh, know not to, like, not to the same extent that Cork would have. Not, not that Cork got beaten so naively. I know Cork, Kilkenny were beaten naively in sixteen. <laughs> I don't think they'd be that naive again. Uh, like the Cork game, the Cork All Ireland quarter final in eighteen uh, or nineteen would definitely suggest that they're not that tactically naive. Where they were under all sorts of pressure, looked like they were going to get ran out the gate, and just dropped like ten or twelve lads behind the ball, stuffed out the Cork attack, and started building again. Um, yeah. But I, I think I think it's a tight run thing between Tip and Kilkenny. I think for for that third spot. Well, Cork have beaten Kilkenny, so. I mean, yeah. we, we can't ignore that. We have no, to we Cork can't ignore of, that, no. Yes, uh, Cork have to go ahead of Kenny. Uh, they have to. They should have just beat them a few weeks ago. And actually yeah. should have, like, they were six points up late on in the game and they got a bit of white line fever and then they kicked on again an extra time. Yeah, so, a, lot, a, lot, a lot. The all Ireland final changes a lot, though, Shane. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but you, you, like, we can't, like, Kenny weren't good enough to get to the final and Cork did. You know, and like if you look at Kilkenny's run this year, they beat Wexford after extra time, then they beat a COVID hit Dublin, and then they got beaten after extra time by Cork. So I'm not really sure what else you're going to say uh, sort of pushes the Kilkenny case here ahead of Cork, who got to the final. Who do you think has more optimism going into 2022? Cork or Cork. Kilkenny? Cork. Even, even, even look at the under 20 say, Just hold on a second now. Even in spite of, like, I'm talking about next year, in spite of an All Ireland final hammering and the demons that they would have to battle over the next God knows how long. I honestly think, like, have you ever been hammered? Have you, like, playing <laughs> for two Several times. Yeah, you have. <laughs> and has that given you a psychological hang up every day since? Or have you ever moved on from it and atoned for it? Yeah, it took me a bit of time to move on for it, all, like. Yeah, well, look, I, I don't think players are going to hang on to this forever. And they're going to have, like, months and months and months. And they might lose again to Limerick next year. But what we've seen is that they can beat Kilkenny. So they had a psychological hang-up having not beaten Kilkenny at Crow Park since 2000. And, was it four or five? 2004, wasn't it? Four, I think, in the final, yeah. So they've shown they can overcome these hang-ups. And, like, their, their trajectory is going up, as I said all year. And I... I just the forward power they have and the youth they have coming through. Compare that with the players coming through for Kenny. Now, like Mullen and obviously Co Owen Cody look like a touch of class, but it's not like they have a million and one brilliant players coming through at the moment compared with Cork and what they have. So I, I don't see a case where you'd have Kenny ahead of Cork here. And while TJ Reid and Patrick Horgan are the same age profile, you could envisage Patrick Horgan playing uh, and still being very mobile in the next two or three years, whereas... TJ, uh, there's definitely an o there's far too much of an over reliance on him. No, listen, I don't, I, I just, I, I wanted, to, I definitely wanted to argue, argue the case anyway because I do think the All Ireland final does have a, a big bearing on next year and how Cork go into next year. But like, who are we talking for number three then? I yeah, well, first, first off, James Maris is a bit strange to ask an awfully hurler. Was he hammered? More suited to ask, did you ever win a game? <laughs> ah, we won a few. In fairness, we won a few. <laughs> um, okay, so. I think Cork probably have to go ahead of Tipperary here. So I'd be looking at Cork 3, Tipperary 4, Kilkenny 5. Oh, yeah, funny enough. I, like, well, how can you put Kilkenny ahead of Tipperary? No, no, I'm, not, I'm actually not saying that. I, I, I'd probably be putting Tip ahead of Cork, if, been, if I'm being honest. you put what? I'd probably put Tip ahead of Cork. You know that I'm... <laughs> that's music to my ears. Yeah, but... <laughs> I, I, you you don't believe. I, I get the I get the sense that you don't believe. They I think weren't... if if Tip met Cork tomorrow, I think it would be um, I think it would be a flip of a coin. If Tipperary pick up the right manager, I can see Tipperary beating Cork next year. But they're further down the line in terms of transition over because of the same players from twenty eighteen and nineteen under twenty twenty one. Their guys all have three or four years experience. The Tipperary guys don't. 
Um, so it's just kind of, are they moving slightly in different directions? I think Cork will be better again next year. Big question marks over tip, where they'll go. I mean, the quality's there. You, you can't go that far ahead of Lim this Limerick team and not have class all over the field. It was just the balance of, did you use enough of the younger players? Did you get them on soon enough? Absolutely, you did not. So your chances faded. So I can see why I'd have Tipperary 3, definitely. I still think Tip could beat Waterford if, they're, if they had the right players on the field as well. So there, there's nothing between a lot of these teams. No, there's nothing. You could throw a blanket over. You could throw a blanket over Tip Cork and Kilkenny realistically, but we're going to have to probably nail our colours to the mass for for number three. Yeah, have Cork done enough in terms of like they've got on one run this season? And I don't think. Clear... So. I don't think so. That that's what I'm saying. Um, we're basing it just on this season. I don't think they have done enough to be honest with you. So we're putting Tipperary in at number three. I put Tip at three. Yeah. Yeah, you've twisted my arm there. You all saw it. You all saw it. He twisted my arm. Uh, let's see. Claire B. Tip question mark says uh, Mark Corcoran. There must have been an earlier conversation that we're missing out. Obviously, Tipperary B. Claire in the championship this year. Park Gill. Tip lucky the structure is the way it is. Otherwise, they'd struggle to hold the Liam McCarthy status. All Munster teams, along with Wexford, Dublin, KK, and Galway, are all better <laughs> worrying for the Premier. <laughs> <laughs> oh man and, I, I actually think there's plenty of, there's plenty of potential for tip next year providing providing the right setup is in place I, yeah, I, Martin, I, Furlong, I Martin Furlong says lads you're desperately over it in Kilkenny realistically will they win in All-Ireland in the next five years probably not will Cork probably yes that's why that's why Kilkenny are going to be a five realistically yeah. in, the, uh, in this debate I'd have, Cork, I'd have Cork in four and Kilkenny five our mm. reminder brought to you by Torpy and the Bamboo Stick. If you want to get that and get 10% off, use the promo code RGAME. So go to torpy.com there. Also, if you do want to get this on audio podcast, go to patreon.com forward slash RGAME. A great way to support the channel. Obviously, you want to kick on into the future, and it'd be great if people could support us there. Plenty have already gotten involved there. And also, just to, something that's absolutely free to do and really would help the channel is if you hit the subscribe button, it's give or take around there. If you're watching on YouTube, obviously subscribe to all the different channels uh, on our game. That'd be brilliant. But it's completely free to subscribe on YouTube. And the more people that hit subscribe, the more other people it's recommended to. And obviously we want the channel to grow. So it'd be great if people could do that because it doesn't cost a, a penny to do it. So uh, just jumping back in again, Michael, there you, dro you dropped off just for a second. Verney being complimentary towards Tip has hell frozen over. <laughs> no, I just think it's, I just think it's been realistic. Like, would I be that shocked if um, would I be that shocked if Tipperary won an All Ireland next year? No, I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be that shocked. I don't. I think there's only, I think there's probably only four teams. I'd say realistically that can win an All Ireland next year, and that's Limerick. Uh, well, we haven't we haven't put Galway into the equation yet, but we don't know exactly what's going to happen with Galway. And with Joe Cannon gone, can Galway realistically win an All Ireland? I'm not so sure. But I would have looked at the top four of uh, Limerick. Limerick, Waterford, Tip and Cork as the four that can realistically win an All-Ireland at this point in time. Now, maybe I'm being slightly generous to, I am probably being slightly generous to Tip in the sense that uh, we don't know who's managing them next year. But I, ju I, I just, I'm not fully sold on Cork yet. Yes, I think there's a load of potential, but I do think that the All-Ireland final annihilation will have a lot of scars for them. Yeah, let's talk about Galway because um, Shane O'Neill, well, we heard they come in the pecking order, but Shane O'Neill has completed two seasons. Underwhelming, I suppose, is the way to look at it. They have been two COVID riddle seasons, so that's made it difficult for him. There are some players that were coming towards the end, and obviously Joe Canning has retired, so it wouldn't have been smooth sailing for him. The talk is that he might be offered a third season. So as we talk about where Galway are in the pecking order here, do you think it, it merits a third season for Shane O'Neill? Yeah, hard to know. Um, like the first season was first season was good in fairness, and there was a lot of league probably didn't start off hectic. He used an awful lot of players, got big numbers out there. Uh, probably found out his squad and got to know uh, got to know the the personnel available to him, and they produced a couple of uh, a couple of decent championship performances, particularly that game against Tip, and a good performance against Limerick, and they were with Limerick down the stretch, which no other team has done really. Um, in the last couple of years outside of that Kilkenny game but like this year was just a disaster no point no point in saying any different just a really underwhelming performance against Dublin uh, like one of the worst halves of Hurland against Waterford just like they got going late on but like the start as bad as they did considering how bad they started against Dublin and just to 
to not get so any sort of a bounce for that first half against Waterford. The game was nearly over at half time, and now you know the best hurler of a generation, potentially the best Galway hurler of all time, is gone from their squad. So there's loads of young talent, and you know I have waxed lyrical about about Brian Kincannon and others in particular, young talents coming through. But you know they do have an awful lot of questions to answer. Like that, that was that was the old Galway this year. That was the old inconsistent. We don't know what we're going to get on a given day, Galway. That had been um, that had been essentially gotten rid of. I think we all don't know who under his reign they were. They were a consistent they were, team. Yeah, they? yeah, yeah. There was no, there was no like clangers thrown in. You knew what you were going to get. And I think that's that's kind of a worrying thing. That's a worrying thing for O'Neill going into his third year. Uh, like, how much is he going to shuffle the deck now this year? Um, and obviously losing a leader like Canning from the dressing room as well. There's, yeah, there's an awful lot of questions to answer. Yeah, and but if you do look through the team, there's a fair spine there. I think Darren Morrissey has come in. I know he got injured in the last game, but I think he's a player of good quality. Park Mannion... Didn't look himself this year. Maybe he was carrying an injury, and maybe not. I, I just think there's an awful lot more in him. Dahi Burke, maybe he'll go back to full back. I mean, we did talk about moving him out to centre back to drive the team forward. In terms of the the impact that had, you know, negligible at best, I suppose. But like just even looking at the back line, Shane Cooney is uh, as kind of I think he's settled in the back line there. I think Darren Morris is good. Grode McInerney, they can, they can, there can be a role. There has to be a role for a six foot five monster like him. Parik Mannion, Dahi Burke, even moving up the field, Cahill Mannion, Connor Whelan, uh, Brian Kincannon. Like you're naming a lot of good players there, Evan Nyland. There's definitely the nucleus of a very good team. A bit like Tipperary. They just need to kind of rejig it a little bit, add a few little extra panels to the team. Can I just say, how much are they missing Johnny Glynn now, do you think? How much are they missing somebody uh, to have that outlet, to have someone that does a lot of the real uh, dirty work for other people? You're talking, naming out loads of unbelievable players, but you know, a lot of the time they're not seeing enough of the ball in these big games uh, and they're been kind of, you know, just been kept quiet in big games that they shouldn't be, maybe because they need. Uh, you know, they need one of the a couple of more dogs in the forward line, maybe than they have. Yeah, I mean, Johnny Glynn's only 28, he only just went at 28. And I mean, it'd be just about not using him the way they did in 2018, which is every yeah. single ball high and hanging. And then Mike Casey, clever fullback, just spoils him. If you use him the right way, I mean, what an asset to have. Next year, says uh, Shane Power, could be the year where Connor Whelan becomes the captain, takes over the mantle from Joe Canning. And leads the Galway attack. He's been the standout when others have failed. That's true. Most he was brilliant this year, Shane. He was brilliant this year when everyone else, when the yeah. majority were poor. The Dhoni 99, Munster will be a minefield next year. Hand pass needs to be looked at. Throwing gets more blatant. There is a, definitely a question on that. We're going to do a piece on that very, very soon. Have Cork become the new Galway in terms of consistency? Uh, I don't, I don't think, in terms of inconsistency, I think it said, mm. or it could have been inconsistency. Yeah. Um, <sighs> I don't know, like, they, Cork were consistent this year, in fairness, they were just blown away in the All-Ireland final, so I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know if that merits, we'll have, to, we'll have to get more evidence before we can kind of make a proper argument on that. Mm, Sylvia M, are Clare ahead of Kilkenny? Good question, mm. good question in fairness, beating, beating a score by, beating a score by Cork, um, and I think... Clare could have done something similar to what, what Cork did after that. I think Clare would have beaten Dublin if that's the way the draw worked out. And I think it would have been the flip of a coin against Kilkenny, if I'm if I'm honest. So may, maybe there's um maybe there's more of a debate needed there. We have kind of one to four sorted. Maybe there's a, a serious like you're looking at five to seven, you're looking at Kilkenny, I would say Kilkenny, Clare, Galway. And uh, Dublin beat Galway two of the last three seasons. Yeah, true. Um, we had we had Galway at number two uh, at the start of the chat at the end of the league, and we still had them at number four or three or four post that Dublin defeat because I don't think we overreacted. But with Canning gone, like, is it like is it time for them to sl to fall well down the table? I think so. I think so because like Clare are moving the right are moving in the right direction. I think Dublin are moving in the right direction. And the, like if they've beaten Galway in two out of three years, the only idea that, or the only reason we'd keep them down below Galway is tradition, isn't it? 
I, I don't I don't know. Like Dublin, uh, Dublin have beaten Galway twice in three in three years. In fairness, they have. Could could Dublin beat Cork? Uh, no, they haven't. Could Dublin beat a lot of the other teams that we're going to put ahead of them? Uh, I don't think they could, and statistically, it would show that they haven't in recent years. Could could Galway beat a lot of the teams ahead of them? Yes, they could. Yeah, uh, not, I'm not just talking on a given day. I'm talking about like they have beaten them um, in recent years. So I'd I'd be uh, I'd be reticent to overreact too much to Galway. Like for me, Galway probably Galway can't be lower than seven. I would say and can't can, be. But by the way, we should mention with clear that they did beat Waterford. At you know Waterford had their issues, but every yeah. team has their issues going into different games. A clear were puck of, puck of a ball away from beating Cork. I mean, one save from Patrick Collins away from being through to the next round, like you said. They start. They definitely had the harder route, seeing as they were in the first round of Munster compared with you know Kenny were in the semi final of Leinster, which is clearly weaker than Munster in terms of like team for team and who's been winning the All Irelands the last number of years. Are Clare ahead of Kenny here? Um, make sure this has been recorded because uh, mm. I think so. I think so, yeah. I do I do think so. Like if you look at the graph of the team, Kilkenny, yeah, they still have that kind of never they said I attitude and they were able to pull a result out of that car game when when it didn't look likely. But like TJ Reid is getting older, Killian Buckley's getting older, Walter Walsh is getting older, even like Joey Holden in, in the you know, in the subs is getting older. Richie Hogan, will we see him next year? That's a lot of big personnel. Whereas uh, and their graph is kind of steady. Uh, whereas Clare, their graph is going up, in my opinion. So I, I have no issue with putting Clare five. Okay, so if if that's Clare five, and we're thinking Clare ahead of Galway, I think you kind of nearly have to. At this I point. think so, yeah. I think yeah, so, the trajectory. Yeah. And um, okay, so Dublin, I think, have to remain below Bo Kilkenny for sure, just because they've won the last couple of Leinster titles and they're getting further in the championship every year. That's not really up for debate. And no. so you still want Galway ahead of Dublin. Yeah, you kind of said that. You have said that. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I like. Would would you be, would you be happy with Clare five, Kilkenny six, Galway seven, Dublin eight, Wexford nine, Leash ten, Antrim eleven? Hmm. I think we've kind of settled on it. I think so. Yeah. Like like Wexford. Where are we? Wexford nine. <clears throat> yes. Like Wexford had doubts as well, and we will probably get into it a bit more. Uh, it looks like JJ Doyle is the, is the front runner now for for the Wexford job, but you know. Um, and he's obviously native, uh, which, which would be a difference, uh, a change probably of tack compared to recent appointments. But it's go like we don't really know where we don't really know where they're going to go from here. Um, and they showed glimpses this year, but just not enough to to say that they're any much higher up the table. I think to be honest with you. Yeah, Bazaroni says, "Is this the monster hurling show?" I mean, you're a Leinster man, died in the wool. A Kilkenny man <laughs> suckling at the teeth. An awfully man suckling at the Kilkenny teeth. No, yeah, I just think... Like, I just don't... I cannot, can't see Kilkenny winning on Ireland. Um, could could Clare potentially... I'll put it this way. Do I think Clare could potentially go on a run and win in All-Ireland if everything fell in place? Maybe. Clare? May, may, maybe, yeah. No, if everything fell in place. I think they have as much of a chance as winning in All-Ireland as Kilkenny has. Okay, so that gives us our power rankings. Limerick number one, Waterford two, Tip three, Cork four, Clare five, six Kilkenny, seven Galway, Dublin are eight, Wexford, Leash and Antrim make up nine, ten and eleven. That's quite something. <laughs> Who would have ever thought that I would talk Tip up from four to three and then talk Kilkenny down from five to six? Just shows anything is possible. And we've got the top five counties are all monster. But like... Is that just realistic to what? Is that just realistic to what um, the current landscape is? Mm, yeah, and uh, ML eighty nine says somehow in the bookies Galway are second favourites. Don't know how this is. Nor do I. Especially with Canning gone, it's a strange one. Even though I think there was a uh, was some special offer there, fifty to one for Galway to win the All Ireland after Canning retired. I think for for a limited time only. Yeah, I'm not sure many, too many people would have taken that up. If you enjoyed this piece of content, please follow us on YouTube by hitting the subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of the page, which helps the channel grow. And if you want audio podcasts, go to patreon.com forward slash our game.